play Bert and Mary Poppins on Broadway. I actually was doing a show in La Jolla uh, called Peter and the Star Catchers, which was such an amazing, beautiful piece of theater that I hope will be happening sometime in the near future. Um, and Tom Schumacher was um, shepherding that through its um, early stages. And so I got to know Tom, and he was the one who thought after seeing the show that perhaps Bert would be a good fit. And uh, so I went in and auditioned for all the powers that be. And it worked out. And here we are. And I'm thrilled to be here. I actually hadn't seen it. It was opening at the same time that Legally Blonde was. And um, having gone through, I was in Legally Blonde for the whole run. And so I, uh, I never got a chance to see it. Until I was thinking about auditioning for it. And, uh, and then I realized I'm going to have to do that. All of that dancing. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Legally Blonde, but I walked everywhere. And I don't walk everywhere in this show. I should take. We started day one with dancing. There's so much of it. And um, we drilled, drilled, drilled. And fortunately, Laura Michelle Kelly was there from day one as well. Um, to, and that was such a lucky, happy, happy turn of events to be able to create that relationship. Um, and for us to come in together, because even though she did it years ago, she didn't want to recreate what she did. And, um, and the show, I think, was quite different from what she did uh, a few years ago. Um, and she was a pip, as my mother would put it, and uh, a very present actress. And um, so in between the kind of finding our own dynamic, we would take a little break and then tap dance for three and a half hours and then take a little break. And then, you know, I won't call it ballet and neither will you. Luckily, five weeks of drilling was enough to kind of get it into the body. And then Jeff Garrett, who was one of the dance supervisors who takes care of all the companies around the world, he came in and gave really specific acting notes for the dancing, which took it all to a completely different level. And he was also the one that basically said, I know that you were told to kind of, you know, do this on three and maybe then spin around. He's like, but do, let's find what looks good on you. Um, which turns out is standing still. What was such a delightful surprise about this whole process was that they weren't plugging me into a track. They wanted me to bring my thing to it, and uh, and that even applied to the dancing and finding a physical vocabulary that suited my body best. Because there are people who have done this role who might be might be a better tap dancer than I am. And so, you know, then they would have their own particular vocabulary in the tap dance. And um, so it's, for a show this big that's been running this long, to be given that freedom was a treat. I'm thrilled. And I'm actually not, I, I'm one of those people who doesn't think it's such a horrible thing that we look to film for, uh, for ideas. I think a good story is a good story. I think the tricky part is now it's so, you know, we see movies and we have them on DVD and we watch them over and over and we become kind of, we see the original person who played it so burned in our brain. So that becomes a challenge as well. But not an insurmountable one. The biggest lesson that I learned in Spamalot actually and watching Mike Nichols and listening to Mike Nichols. It was the first time that I had a sense of the power of just being yourself. To have Mike Nichols say, just, you can't help but be yourself, and then the material will bring all the rest of the stuff out. Um, and that was kind of an epiphany. And so in playing Bert, um, the direction that I got, fortunately, at my audition was be yourself. Um, because I had been um, acting, some might say overacting, and um, Richard Eyre, after I finished the Fly a Kite sequence, he said, um, I feel like at any moment you're about to sing Be Our Guest. And, uh, and he said, just be yourself. And so that's how I started with Bert. And, uh, and the comedy's all in the material. And now as I'm getting more comfortable, and obviously you layer on the costume and all of those elements, then it becomes you know, something else entirely. But um, doing it in front of an audience has been huge as well. You feel the love, and you feel the kind of openness to it. There's actually not a sense of like, show me the movie. Right. Um, they are 
incredibly attentive and you know, it's a wide ranging audience. It's, they're really young kids there and they have been, it's not, uh, they're wrapped. I mean, you could hear a pin drop at times. When times, at the times you should want to hear a pin drop. And at the times where you want to hear the laughter of children, you hear the laughter of children. It's a challenge, of course, you know, doing something during the day and then going to do the show and then starting all over again at 8 o'clock in the morning. But there's something about Mary Poppins, I have to say, in particular, it's such incredible aerobic exercise. Honestly, that there, I found my t myself where I should be crashing and burning like I've got all the energy in the world. So, thank you, Mary Poppins. Thank you, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins.